The history of toast, of course, begins with bread. The earliest archaeological evidence of flour dates back some 30,000 years, and it's likely people were making flatbreads around that time too. Along with being a staple food in many civilizations, ritual bread was sometimes used as an offering to the gods in ancient Greece. Wheat and barley were a few of the first crops domesticated in the Fertile Crescent, despite not being as nutritionally rich as other food sources that could be gathered. The bread that resulted from grain crops was able to sustain a larger population. It's thought that the ability to make bread was a factor in ancient peoples being able to end their nomadic lifestyle and settle in one place. Bread, as we know it today, was likely invented in ancient Egypt. The Egyptians learned that if they left dough sitting out for a while, it would rise. When baked, the bread would retain its risen shape. This was, of course, due to yeast spores in the air finding their way to the dough. The closed oven was invented in Egypt for the baking of leavened bread by 3000 BC. And the workers who built the famous pyramids were often paid partially with bread. At this point in history, leavened bread was a lighter bread that was considered much nicer than flat breads. There was just one problem. Left out in the desert heat for long periods of time, it would go hard and become difficult to eat. The solution? Well, that would be toast. It's generally thought that toast originated as a way to preserve bread rather than as a tasty breakfast item smothered in butter and jam. By scorching slices of bread, they lasted longer as a palatable food. This is also why French toast first began being made. It's all about not wasting food. The practice of toasting bread became popular in the Roman Empire. The word toast actually comes from the Latin tostum, meaning to burn or scorch. The first breads were likely toasted by laying them in front of the fire on a hot stone. Later, some Simple devices were created to toast bread in the fire, such as wireframes to cook the toast more evenly, or even sticks like those we use to toast marshmallows over a campfire today. The first electric toaster was invented in 1893 by Scotsman Alan McMasters, but it wasn't very popular. The iron wiring would often melt, creating a fire hazard. That was as if people could use the toaster at all, as electricity wasn't widespread at the time. In 1905, two Chicago inventors created an alloy that was highly fire resistant. That meant others could take Take another shot at a safer and more effective electric toaster. Several different electric toasters were invented around the same time. These toasters could only toast one side of the bread at once, and then the bread had to be flipped over. Further developments included the automatic toast turner, created in 1913, the semi-automatic toaster, which turned off the heating element when the bread was cooked. The modern timed pop-up toaster was created in 1919. By this time, an invention was in the works that would make grabbing some toast in the morning even easier pre-sliced bread. The world's first commercially used automatic bread slicer was invented by Otto Frederick Rodwedder in Davenport, Iowa. He built a prototype of his bread slicer in 1912. Unfortunately, his blueprints and machine were destroyed in a fire in 1917. From there, he struggled to obtain funding to begin again on his machine as the idea of pre-sliced bread was not popular among bakers. Yes, even the invention of pre-sliced bread, which shortly would give us the phrase the greatest thing since sliced bread, was a hard sell at first because bakers were worried that the bread would go stale before it could be sold. They also felt the reduction in shelf life of bread would not be popular among customers, even if it was reasonably well packaged, to try and delay the inevitable accelerated staleness as much as possible. Soldiering on anyway, in 1927, Rowedo was able to rebuild his machine and produce a model ready to be used in an actual bakery, first selling his bread slicing and wrapping machine to the Chillicothe Baking Company in Chillicothe, Missouri, about 90 miles northeast of Kansas City. The front page of the town's newspaper announced the arrival of this new standard of living with the headline, Sliced Bread is Made Here. A back page ad on July the 6th, 1928 claimed it was the greatest forward step in the baking industry since bread was wrapped. So for those wondering what the best thing was before sliced bread, from this ad apparently, wrapped bread was the answer. Going back to the staleness problem, in order to get around that issue, Rowida initially tried to hold the pieces of bread together after slicing it with pins. The pins would then be removed when you wanted a slice. This didn't really work out for a variety of reasons, and he ultimately simply modified his machine to wrap the sliced loaves in wax paper directly after slicing. Pre-sliced bread helped to further popularize toast and the toaster because it was easy to grab a few uniformly cut slices, pop them in the toaster, and have breakfast a few minutes later. And the rest, as they say, is tasty, tasty history. And now for a bonus fact. In 1943, Claude R. Wickard, the head of the War Foods Administration as well as the Secretary of Agriculture, got the bright idea to ban pre-sliced bread in America, which he did on January the 18th, 1943. 
Why? Conservation of resources, particularly generally thought to have been about conserving wax paper, wheat, and steel. With regards to the wax paper, by FDA regulations, pre-sliced bread used much thicker wax paper than loaves sold whole. This is due to the fact that sliced bread, not surprisingly, go stale significantly faster than loaves left unsliced. Oddly, while this was officially stated as the reason for the ban, according to the War Production Board, most bread-making companies had wax paper supplies on hand to last several months, even if they didn't buy any more during that span. And beyond that, there was no shortage elsewhere at the time. It has also been suggested that a secondary goal was to try to conserve wheat and to lower bread and flour prices. Around World War II, the Office of Price Administration had authorized an increase in flour prices by about 10%. This naturally resulted in the price of bread increasing. Further, when pre-sliced bread was first introduced nationwide, it drastically increased bread sales. So the thought was that by banning pre-sliced bread, the amount of bread consumed would go down. This would then reduce the demand for flour and wheat and thus decrease the prices of those products while simultaneously increasing stockpiles of wheat. Of course, as with the wax paper reasoning, the idea of conserving wheat seems an odd thing given that at the time of the ban, the US had stockpiled over 1 billion bushels of wheat. This was enough to meet the United States' needs for about two years, even if no new wheat was harvested over that span. And as you know, the US produces a lot of wheat. Finally, breadmaking machines used quite a bit of steel in their production, so it has been suggested that one of the reasons for this sliced bread ban was to conserve this metal. This line of reasoning also seems somewhat dubious, as most bread manufacturers weren't actively buying new bread slicing machines at any given time, so the benefit would be marginal, even accounting for the machine's large size and significant amount of metal used in its production. As you might imagine, banning pre-sliced bread did not go over well with the masses. The best thing since sliced bread is an expression for a reason. As one woman aptly put in a letter appearing in the New York Times, I should like to let you know how important sliced bread is to the morale and saneness of a household. My husband and four children are all in a rush during and after breakfast. Without ready sliced bread, I must do the slicing for toast, two pieces for each one, that's ten. For their lunches, I must cut by hand at least 20 slices for two sandwiches apiece. Afterward, I make my own toast, 22 slices of bread to be cut in a hurry. Within about three months of the ban being introduced, on March the 8th, 1943, it was rescinded. Upon lifting the ban, Wickard stated, Our experience with the order leads us to believe that the savings are not as much as we expected. Finally, if you're wondering who coined the expression the best thing since sliced bread, the first documented instance is thought to be in a 1952 interview where the famous comedian Red Skelton advised the Salisbury, Maryland Times to quote, Not worry about television, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. So I really hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please do smash that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.